Hi, I am Dr. Aisha Sheikh, endocrinologist and faculty member at Al Khan University Hospital, Karachi, Pakistan. I am the president-elect of Pakistan Endocrine Society. Today, I will discuss managing hyperthyroidism in pregnancy. While the causes are many, uh, Graves' disease and gestational thyroidoxygosis stay as the most frequent causes of hyperthyroidism in pregnancy. It is important to differentiate between Graves' disease and gestational thyroidoxygosis because the management differs. Gestational thyroidoxygosis, which is most often seen in conditions where beta CG levels are very high, uh, commonly occurring in, just, in hyper MSS gravidarum and uh, multiple pregnancies. Symptoms pre-pregnancy of thyroidoxygosis would be evident in Graves' disease but will be absent in gestational thyroidoxygosis where nausea vomiting would be more marked during pregnancy. Symptoms of thyroidoxygosis are more marked in Graves' hyperthyroidism and goiter with Graves' ophthalmopathy and TSH receptor antibodies presence would be seen in Graves' disease. Antithyroid drugs are usually needed in Graves' hyperthyroidism but are not needed in gestational thyroidoxygosis. So this is the typical presentation of hyperemesis gravidarum leading to gestational thyroidoxygosis where early pregnancy, nausea and vomiting would lead to a suppressed TSH level and elevated free T4 levels. As pregnancy progresses and hyperemesis gravidarum improves, these uh, levels will settle and uh, patient's condition will improve as well. All we need to do is to give supportive care and if needed a short course of beta blockers but antithyroid drugs are not required. The management of Graves' disease during pregnancy is challenging. There are two patients with competent priorities. The immune response changes and generally we expect an amelioration of Graves' disease as pregnancy progresses. The adverse effects of Graves' disease in pregnancy are borne by both mother and the fetus. Uncontrolled hyperthyroidism leads to hypertension, arrhythmias and heart failure in the mother and increases the risk of preeclampsia and abruptio placenti. Uh, on the other hand, thionamides can lead to their adverse effects in the mother. The fetus, on the other hand, uh, will be having a risk of higher miscarriages, stillbirths, intrauterine growth restriction, and thionamide-induced congenital anomalies and fetal hypothyroidism. At the same time, the maternal TSH receptor antibodies cross the placenta and reach the fetus and can lead to fetal and neonatal hyperthyroidism, fetal and neonatal hypothyroidism, fetal goiter, and neonatal goiter. Uh, here you can see the risk of congenital anomalies with antithyroid drug exposure. Aplasia cutis is well reported with methimazole and uh, other anomalies which are labeled as methimazole embryopathy are evident with carbimazole methimazole use. Uh, the propylthiuracil exposure again is not absolutely free of uh, congenital anomalies and can lead to certain head and neck defects and urinary tract abnormalities. Uh, this population based data from Denmark shows that the risk of congenital anomalies is higher with propylthiuracil and carbimazole compared to background control population, uh, although the risk of um, major anomalies was higher with carbimazole and methimazole. So for a woman with new or active Graves' disease, the management would uh, involve recommendations for each trimester pregnancy and at the postpartum uh, period. Uh, in the first trimester, if the woman was already on methimazole, carbimazole, she needs to be switched to propylthiuracil and if she was uh, is treatment naive and is having hyperthyroidism that necessitates antithyroid drug, propylthiuracil needs to be started and given at the lowest effective dose which can uh, maintain the free T4 at the upper normal range or just above the upper reference range. Monitoring of thyroid function tests on a 2 to 4 weekly basis is recommended and checking TSH receptor antibodies at this interval. During the second and third trimester, uh, by 16 week of gestation, she needs to be switched to carbimazole, again maintaining the lowest effective dose to, to keep the free T4 at the upper normal range and checking TSH receptor antibodies by the end of second trimester or early third trimester. If the TSH receptor antibodies are positive, the fetal ultrasound needs to be done in a manner to look for fetal thyroidoxicosis uh, features in, her, in, in the baby. Um, at the time of delivery uh, and after delivery, you will expect a relapse of Graves disease and that needs to be um, properly followed up. The baby's thyroid function tests need to be uh, assessed at delivery and at uh, day 4 to 7. So this is how the clinical course of Graves disease in pregnancy progresses. In early pregnancy, we start propylthiuracil and then by 16 weeks of gestation, switch to methimazole, carbimazole, trying to keep the free T4 level at the upper normal reference range or just above the upper normal reference range. 
As pregnancy progresses, as Graves' disease will continue to ameliorate, there is a chance that we might discontinue methimazole uh, during third trimester of pregnancy. The TSH will stay suppressed throughout gestation and should not be the guiding test to adjust the antithyroid drug doses. Uh, after delivery, there is a risk of relapse and she needs to be carefully monitored for that and treatment initiated when needed. So if we encounter a low TSH in pregnancy, that needs to be followed by an FT4 level. And the level should be uh, interpreted in the context of pregnancy specific reference ranges. If the free T4 is normal, this is subclinical hyperthyroidism and does not need treatment during pregnancy. If she has high free T4, this is overt hyperthyroidism. And if there is a goiter with brui and Graves of thermopathy and TSH receptor antibodies, then this is Graves disease and might need treatment. Uh, keeping in mind that mild hyperthyroidism can go untreated in pregnancy. Uh, using the lowest effective doses of antithyroid drugs. Uh, in a situation where a woman is requiring really high doses of antithyroid drugs, she is intolerant to these drugs or there are adverse effects and there is uncontrolled hyperthyroidism, the woman can be offered thyroidectomy during the second trimester of pregnancy, which is a relatively safer period for a surgery. If there isn't a goiter, graves of thermopathy and TSH receptor antibodies are negative and she has features of hyperemesis gravidarum, or nausea vomiting in pregnancy. She is having gestational thyroxicosis, which needs supportive care. There isn't a need of antithyroid drug medications for gestational thyroxicosis as the condition will resolve as the pregnancy progresses. So thank you very much.